Welcome back to Dirty Money, the show where we share with you the most filthy financial scandals of the week. And today we are talking about the business of human trafficking. And it's very sad because actually two Americans, well, four Americans were kidnapped last week or earlier this week um, as they crossed the border from Brownville, Texas into Mexico. They were going for a medical procedure there. Uh, kind of medical tourism. They were kidnapped by the cartels and two of them were actually killed. Uh, one of them, I believe, was injured as well. Um, and human trafficking, it is a huge industry. Isn't that right, Mike? Oh, enormous. I mean, you wouldn't believe the amount of money that flows through that industry every year, every day, every minute, every second. Um, I mean, it's the oldest business on the planet, right? And uh, we, yeah, we have some statistics here. It's worth something like twenty-two million dollars a day just in Texas. Yeah, um, Te Texas is one of the heaviest uh, trafficking places. You know, Brownsville is where these guys came from. Uh, I know a team of people that have been working on. Uh, they were covering the border before doing a documentary, and it turns out that they ended up. Uh, it turned into a human trafficking thing because that's the biggest business along the border right now. People think it's drugs and yeah, there, there is a lot of drugs, but it's, it's hand in hand with each other is the human trafficking. And when you really look at it fundamentally, you know, the product can just be resold. So it's not like drugs where you sell it, it's consumed. It's like they can resell the same human every, you know, throughout the night. It, it, it's unless it's terminated. Right. It sounds horrible. Just saying it. But like yeah. <laughs> the, the, the human life is so just not thought of in that world. You have these traffickers all over the world. And, and, you know, every 26 seconds, there's a kid that goes into child slavery. And so it's like that's that's intense in and of itself. That's a that's absolutely insane. So it's like that's worldwide. And, and the estimates for it, you know, I've heard people say that it's $150 billion a year industry. And then I've heard people say it's up to $499 billion a year industry in the world. You know, that puts it as, as, you know, one of the top businesses, I wouldn't say it's a lot more. Uh, when you really think about it, how do you, how do you calculate illegal business? Right. And, and actually put real numbers behind it. If, if there's some estimates at four hundred ninety nine billion dollars a year, like let's 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 it's probably a bit more because that's just stuff that they're able to track. You know, yeah. it's like how much drugs are coming across the border. Well, you could probably go down any major street in the United States and find some illicit drugs. Right. Someone's using someone's selling. Um, and that's not calculated. They're just calculating what comes across the border. So. They're using estimations based on on that, what they seize. So it's like these are estimations based on how many people that they find in, uh, you know, human trafficking things. So it's really, you know, it's hard to even understand. But, you know, 80 percent of everybody that's trafficked are women. So yeah. it, so it's like the the who's trafficking the women? Well, men are. You know, like who, who, who's who's the one taking control of this? And it's a really dark corridor to walk down. You know, it's it gets to be pretty, pretty because horrific. The majority of it is a forced sex slavery, isn't it? Basically. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that's that's the really where it comes into. And, you know, the average age is 12 to 14 years old where the where they're getting picked up in traffic. And, it, and it's it's pretty insane. I mean, there's. There's areas in Texas that are just so known for it. You can park your car and you can hear the screams in the middle of the night. You know, like you can go to go to certain, you know, Eagles Pass, Texas, and you know that this is a really crazy pace. The thing that really blows my mind is that the cartels released this letter saying, we're sorry. You know, like that's right. They apologized and they said that it was a uh, kind of a rogue faction within them. Um, and but this was. This is after uh, Senator Lindsey Graham. He was said he was prepared to introduce legislation to quote set the stage for U.S. military force uh, to be used in Mexico. So this is what he wrote. He said, "I will. I would put. Or well, this is what he said on uh, in an interview. He said, "I would put Mexico on notice. If you continue to give a safe haven to drug dealers, uh, then you're an enemy of the United States." 
uh, and he's trying to yeah he's trying to introduce legislation to us the us military to actually go after the cartels which uh to be honest i think should have been done a long time ago i mean oh, yeah. it's basically the cartels are basically a foreign terrorist group that's operating right on the border uh we should have in my opinion we should have sent the military in years ago and just created a buffer zone inside mexico um to just police you know just police it like we did in afghanistan like we did in you know other places so, sorry guys if you can't be trusted to get rid of these cartels uh we're coming into your country and there's nothing you can do about it um but i guess they don't because certain people in the government are actually in on the whole thing yeah well the d it's kind of like the dmz in korea right we need that 10 miles where it's like nobody's oh, allowed here. Wow. 100 miles <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you know? but, uh, but fundamentally whose pockets are getting filled from it you know there there's all these reports from from different sources saying you know where does where does the money really go to the mexican government i mean the the fish and wildlife uh person that that ran fish and wildlife in mexico up until recently they were there for like 30 or 40 years this exact same person and these are the guys importing and exporting fish out of the country and it's like yeah what are you really doing buddy you know what are you what are you exporting in and out of this country and it's 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 appalling to think but here the cartel is like oh let's send out a letter like there's some like credible uh, government or credible like institution like is are we dealing with the <laughs> that's, taliban here that's or the other we... funny thing isn't it it's like oh you send out a letter saying oh we're sorry we sorry you kidnapped and killed your people it's like you're a cartel. You shouldn't exist in the first place. Right? Why, why would we accept your apology? Yeah. Thanks. We appreciate your apology. Continue on with your illicit activities and murdering people on a daily basis. Like, well, who's to, who's to say that those were even the actual people that committed the kidnapping? True. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the cartels do it anyway, though. So, like, we yeah. know that for sure. There's a reason Chapo's in prison, Sinaloa, and the the Zetas and and you know all these cartels are at each other's throats and and they're being constantly raided by you know the federales in mexico uh so it's like even if they weren't part of the cartel or they were a rogue rogue group like what what a, no no thank you i don't accept that you know the, the, i mean the, it, the cartel uh, the cartel could have been behind it, but then they could have just decided, all right, we're just going to say that these guys were a rogue group. And apparently they've done this before, actually. They've apologized before for things, um, just as a sort Aww. of public relations <laughs> thing. Oh, they, got, they got a PR person. That's, that's you know, <laughs> it blows my mind. You know, I'm like, is this Lucky Luciano before 1940s when he went over and saw Mussolini and lived out his years in Sicily? Like, hmm, that's another story for dirty money. Um so, you know, it's interesting to think about the organized crime and, and, you know, the tolerance levels of it from different governments, right? You know, that's, that's really what we're doing is we're tolerating this for whatever reason we deem it worthy. Um, we're, we're willing to go into to Iraq and to Afghanistan to, to take out their injustices that are taking place uh, you know, on the other side of the world, really not affecting any U.S. citizens. Yeah. And here, it's... I mean, it's, it's you can US. say the same thing about Ukraine. You know, we're spending... Uh, we appropriated $113 billion for Ukraine to aid, you know, Ukrainians. But we're not using our military uh, to aid people who are suffering here in the U.S. and just over the border. So... Yeah. yeah. And that's that's the reality that we face is Why? And I don't think there's any one answer to it, but ultimately Lindsey Graham's, you know, I agree with this stance. Like, you know, let's, let's take in, let's take action. Let's make initiatives to deter, you know, the loss of human life. That's what's, you know, the most valuable thing on the planet is human life. So how do we, how do we become successful in, in stopping the, the slaughter of, of people and, and trafficking and stuff like that? It's just, it's a really dark, dingy world, you know, and and we live here in America where 99% of the time you don't even think about it. It's not in the news. It's not going to hit it. Luckily, we, we were able to show a little bit of news about it um, recently with this, you know, but a lot of the time you don't hear about the kids that are lost. You don't hear about the people that are, 
that are risking their lives to stop trafficking that are on the streets and in places like Houston and Miami and LA where, where you have all these huge border cities or close to the border cities that are really partaking in, in the actual business of it, you know, and you can trace the, you can trace the money back. It gets pretty scary. You know, the more you dig into it, the more I think you've got to watch behind your back. And so ultimately, you know, it's good to good to pay attention. So let's just hope that the cartel uh, does more than just apologize. Maybe they'll disintegrate themselves, dissolve it. You know, they'll dissolve their assets. Here you guys go. We're all done. You know, I maybe the U.S. military really will go in. Yeah, we'll see. You we'll know, I think. Well, yeah, I think if if that was going to take place, it would have to be done by the commander in chief. Uh, he would have to take action. You know, the Congress is not about to declare war on the cartels. That's for sure. All right. So if you're just joining us, um, don't forget you can follow Dirty Money on all of the major social media, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube as well, and whatever uh, podcast platform you are listening to us. Uh, That's all for this uh, clip, but there'll be more in the next one.